Section 2.5, rational functions. Quotient of two polynomial functions. For example, we could have x plus 2 over x plus 3, if that's what f of x equals. We got ourselves a rational function. With these rational functions, we're going to talk about vertical, horizontal, slant asymptotes, x and y intercepts, holes, and domains. We're going to put that all together uh, to graph the function. Vertical asymptotes occur where the function is undefined, in other words, the zeros of the denominator. Horizontal asymptotes occur dependent on relationship of leading terms in numerator and denominator. Given ax to the n over bx to the m, uh, we, could, uh, we could talk about all these rules, but here, here, here's a little uh, snapshot of what we're going to do. If we have 2x squared over 3x to the third, then it's an automatic y equals zero. That's what the horizontal asymptote would be. So if it's little power over big power, y equals zero. If we had 2x to the third over uh, 3x squared, then we have none. We don't Big over little, that means we don't have a horizontal asymptote. And then if we have 2x to the third over 3x to the third, then that means the horizontal asymptote is y equals two-thirds, or the ratio of the coefficients. When there is no horizontal asymptote and the numerator is higher than the denominator, there is an asymptote that is not horizontal. could be linear. We call that slanted or, or oblique. Uh, could also be quadratic or parabolic or all kinds of shapes. We can have all kinds of shapes that are asymptotes. Use polynomial division to find equation of the slant asymptote. So we do long division to find the equation of the slant asymptote if we don't have that horizontal asymptote. To find x and y intercepts, uh, the x intercept is. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What? If you want to find x and y intercepts, to find the x intercepts, we plug in 0 for y. And then if you want the y intercepts, we plug in 0 for x. We'll talk about those. A little later, holes, removable discontinuities, exist when a factor in the numerator and denominator cancel. So if we had x plus 2, x plus 2, x plus 1, let's say, in the numerator, and we had x plus 2 in the denominator, there would be a hole where x is equal to negative 2. The hole will be uh, the x value that makes the, the factor that canceled 0. All right, let's get to the graphing. In example 1, we're going to graph this right here and the first step when uh, we get the the polynomial is to factor anything we can factor so x squared minus 4 factors into x minus 2 x plus 2 let's talk about vertical asymptotes well first we don't have the same factor in both the numerator and the denominator so first of all we have no holes in this graph let's talk about vertical asymptotes that's what makes the denominator zero so we have vertical asymptotes at x equals 2 and negative 2 uh, so now we uh, draw those with dotted lines. Let's see if I have the dotted line up here. I do. So we have a vertical asymptote at negative 2 and a vertical asymptote at positive 2. Uh, horizontal asymptotes. Now that's a relationship between the, the powers or the degree of the polynomials. Now we have little over big. That's an automatic y equals 0, which is the, uh, the x-axis x-intercepts, we want to plug 0 in for y, which means we'd have 0 equals x plus 1. Now, we don't have to worry about the denominators because you, uh, you can't make this equal to 0 by using the denominator. If the denominators were 0, that would be undefined, and that's your vertical asymptotes. So we have an x-intercept where x is equal to negative 1. So the x-intercepts occur where the top is equal to zero. Our y-intercept, we're going to plug zeros in for the x's, and it's actually easier to plug zero in for the x's in the original rather than the factored form. So if we plug zeros into these two x's here, we get negative one-fourth. So we have a y-intercept at negative one-fourth. So let's plot those. We have an x-intercept at negative one. That's right here. And we have a y-intercept at negative one-fourth. That would be down here. Uh, so we have uh, we have some information to go on so far. How about uh, the domain? Let's worry about the domain a little bit later. So uh, now we need some extra values. Really, we have one, two, 
three little regions that we need to graph into. So let, let's look at region number one. So let's plug in one, two, how about negative three? Let's plug in negative three. We have negative three comma something. Well, what happens when we plug negative three in here? We get negative two over negative three minus two, that's negative five, and then times negative three plus two, that's negative one. So we have negative two over five. So we have negative two uh, fifths right here. So ne negative three, negative two fifths. That'd be about right here. Now this graph is going to hug these asymptotes right here. Now let's look at, um, how about one? Let's plug in one because we got this second region that we have to graph in. Uh, so one comma something. Let's plug one in here and we're going to get two over one minus two is negative one and one plus two is three. So it's going to be negative two thirds. So we have negative two thirds. That's down here. And I know that this is going to cut through these points like that and then follow the asymptotes. Now I know this won't curve around and come back up because then we'd have another x-intercept. Well now we have region three uh, to worry about. So let's plug in one, two, three. Let's plug in uh, three comma something. Well three plus one is four. Three minus two is one and three plus two is five. So we have the point uh, three, four fifths. So one, two, three, four fifths. That's up here almost at one. And then the graph should hug these asymptotes just like that. So let's take a look at uh, a process. You know, this is what it looks like if you use a nice graphing utility. Example two for f of x equals two x plus three over negative six x plus three. We're gonna we're gonna graph this. We're gonna find all the information. So the first thing we would do is we would factor uh, this uh, top and the bottom. So we can take a two out on top and negative three out on the bottom, and that's what remains. Let's look at vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes is what makes the denominator zero or the function undefined. So two x minus one equals zero. We would add one. So x equals one half. So we have a vertical asymptote at where x is one half. That's about right there. Horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote is a comparison of the powers on the top and the bottom. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative one third. So let's put that in here. That's uh, that's a probably a little bit too low. Let's bring that up a little bit. That's more like two thirds. Can we do that? And how about right there? X-intercepts, that's where Y is equal to zero or where the top is equal to zero. I mean, if we plug zero in for Y, we'd have zero equals two times X plus three. We don't have to worry about the denominator. Denominators can't make functions equal to zero. So at X equals negative three, that should be an equals negative three. So one, two, three, here we are right there. Uh, for a Y-intercept, we want zeros in for the X's. Probably easier to plug zero in for these X's and you get two so we have a y-intercept at two now i have lots of information about this side already so i'm pretty sure it does some action like that and then uh we don't have anything any information on the right side of this vertical asymptote so let's plug in maybe how about uh, one one comma something well now let's plug one in here we'd have two times four over Negative three times, let's see, two minus one is one. So it looks like a negative eight thirds, or we'd have negative two and two thirds, negative two and two thirds, one, two, and down here. And so I'm guessing that this graph does something like that. Now let's talk about the domain. The domain is negative infinity to this vertical asymptote at one half, union with one half to infinity those are the x values that we've graphed this over now uh we didn't do this back on this one let's do the domain here and really what's going to affect the domain is the vertical asymptote so we have negative infinity to negative two union with negative two to two so we've used negative infinity to negative two we've used all those x values we've used the x values in between and we use all the x values after two so now we have two to infinity and let's, here, here's a reminder what what we just graphed here. Let's take a peek at uh, using a graphing uh, function here, a graphing calculator, and, and uh, pretty darn close to what we have. Uh, here's the next one. 
x squared minus 4 over 5x squared minus 5. And we've factored the top and we have factored the bottom by pulling a 5 out and then you get x squared minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1. So let's look at vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes is where the denominator is 0. So we have x equals plus or minus 1 in this case. So we have two vertical asymptotes, one right here approximately and one right there. Horizontal asymptotes is a comparison of the powers. And so uh, we have the same powers on both top and bottom. So now we have y equals one fifth. So y equals one fifth. Let's get that in there. Let's draw it. That's probably a little too high. Uh, let's lower it a little bit. Yeah, about right there would be one fifth. X intercepts, plug zero in for Y, or in other words, what makes the top zero. So we have two X intercepts at plus and minus two. So we have positive two and or negative two, and we have positive two. Y intercepts, we're going to plug zero in for the X's. So that's zero, that's zero. So it looks like four fifths, four fifths right there. So right up there. Now, I pretty much have the graph, believe it or not. It's going to follow this, these asymptotes over here. Going to follow that asymptote, follow that asymptote. And if, if it cut through this point and crossed the x-axis, then we'd have uh, more x-intercepts. So this is going to do this action right here to loop and come back up and follow those two asymptotes. Now, it's, it's the vertical asymptotes that determines the domain. So we've graphed this on from negative infinity to negative 1. From negative 1 to 1, we've graphed it in between the 1s, and then we've graphed it from 1 to infinity. Let's take a look at this, and uh, yeah, pretty close. Pretty close to what we have. How about this one, determine any vertical? Well, just get the information, but this one's going to have a slant asymptote because we don't have a horizontal. Uh, the power on top is bigger than the bottom, so now we have to deal with a slant asymptote. What about vertical asymptotes? Uh, can we factor this? Let's see, x minus 2, x plus 1 over x plus 2. So we don't have a hole in the graph because we don't have any factors that match. That's close, but it's not the same. Uh, so vertical asymptotes, that's where the denominator is 0. So x equals negative 2. We have a vertical asymptote over here at negative 2. Horizontal asymptotes is a comparison of the powers, and when the top is bigger than the bottom, we have none. We have we don't have any horizontal asymptotes. Slant asymptotes, we have to do long division. So long division, x squared minus x minus 2. What do we take times x to get x squared? That's x. So we have x squared plus 2x, and we always subtract with long division. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3x minus 2. And then uh, what do we multiply times x to get negative 3x? Well, minus 3. So minus 3x minus 6, and we don't actually worry about the remainder. Here's our slant asymptote, x minus 3. So we graph this line. We have a y-intercept of negative 1, 2, 3, and a slope of 1. So let's, let's go up here, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Uh, a bunch of slopes of 1 right there. Hey, and negative 3 right there. So there's our slant asymptote. What about x-intercepts? That's well, We plug 0 in for a y. So uh, that's really what makes the top of the rational function 0. So x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. So 2 right there, we have an x-intercept. And then we have another one at negative 1. Uh, what about a y-intercept? We plug 0 in for all the x's, 0, 0, 0, and it turns out we have a y-intercept at negative 1. Well, that's a lot of information on the right side of this vertical asymptote. So it's going to follow this asymptote, going to loop through these two points right here, and then follow that asymptote. That should be very close to what it actually looks like. But we don't have anything graphed on the left side of this vertical asymptote. So it's either going to be on the top here or on the bottom Let's plug in some values to find that out. Let's plug in negative 3. So negative 3 comma something. Probably a little easier to plug that negative 3 in here. We got uh, negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 2 over down here is going to be negative 1. So we really have uh, 10 over negative 1. We got negative 10. So negative 3 gives, gets us all the way down here at negative 10. So now this is uh, 
below this slant asymptote. So it's going to follow that asymptote and loop around and follow that asymptote as well. Now let's talk about the domain. This is graphed from negative infinity to negative 2, and it's graphed from 2 to infinity. So that's the x values that this is graphed on. So uh, let's take a look at uh, kind of a you know gra graphing calculator look at this function, and here we have it. Example five, determine. Uh, we'll just find the information and and graph this function right here. And we've graphed, we've factored the top and we've factored the bottom. Looks what happens here. This is the first thing we need to check. We need to check for holes. And we have a hole at three comma something. And we pick three because that's what makes this factor zero. And how do we find the something? How do we find the y? We just plug this three, plug that three into what remains. And so we have a six over five. So six fifths. So one and one fifth. So at three, one, two, three, and one and one fifth, there should be a hole in the graph. Now that's going to be a nice reference because the graph is still going to go through that hole, but that hole is still going to be there. Now we're going to find the information on what's left over on the x plus 3 over x plus 2. We can forget about this. We've, we've taken care of the x minus 3s. Well, what about the x-intercepts? Uh, now let's go back up here. Vertical asymptotes. Let's go in order. x equals negative 2. It's what makes the denominator 0, so negative 2. Uh, so let's go over here and use it. I'm going to use the tool. You guys can just kind of freehand it if you're following along. So negative 2 right there. Uh, and then uh, horizontal asymptotes, that's at 1 because the powers are the same on what's left over and the coefficients are 1 over 1. So we have y equals 1 as a horizontal asymptote. So there we go, right there. Uh, X-intercepts, that's where y is 0. In other words, what makes the top 0. So we have an x-intercept at negative 3. So 1, 2, 3 right there. And a y-intercept, uh, that's uh, we plug zeros in for the x's. So zero here, zero here, that's one and a half. In other words, three halves. So three halves, one and a half. So one and one half right there. Well, I can pretty much draw the graph now because it's going to go through that point, follow that asymptote, and then it's going to follow these asymptotes right here. And it's going to go through that, that open dot but uh, it's going to remain an open dot right there. Now the domain is negative infinity, negative two, union with negative two to infinity. Actually, uh, that is not true. I got to be very careful with this because uh, we did not use three to graph this. That's an open dot there. So that that three is not part of the domain. So negative two to three, union with three to infinity. And there we have it. Let's take a look at the graph, and uh, with this graphing utility, the only thing it doesn't show real well is where the holes are, and there should be a hole right there at 3 uh, and 1 and 1 fifth.